So we now move on to The Batman, this time the movie. Initially, the movie started out as a Ben Affleck solo film. Ben was going to write, direct, and produce it. I couldn't track down an official point in the DCEU timeline when this was going to take place, but I assume probably after Justice League. Comic writer Jeff Johns was brought on along with Chris Terrio to help with the scripting. Terrio is definitely no stranger to DCEU or Ben Affleck movies. He has writing credit on Argo, Batman v Superman, Justice League, both cuts of Justice League, and he even has writing credit on The Rise of Skywalker. Jeff Johns, on the other hand, as I've said in previous videos, big name over at DC Comics. Jeff Johns had runs on The Flash, Green Lantern, Hawkman, Justice League, Batman, and much more. Story cited as the inspiration for Affleck's story was Graham Morrison's A Series House on Series Earth, The Arkham Video Games, and Nightfall. It's going to be a story about Batman at the asylum with the breakout being organized by Deathstroke for some odd reason. According to Joe Manganiello, Batgirl was also going to be involved to some extent. I'm not entirely sure why. Why? 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 Oh, I don't know. Eventually, Ben decided he wasn't going to write the story anymore, and he stepped down from that. He ended up stepping down from directing it as well. Enter Matt Reeves, who you likely know from Cloverfield, or two-thirds of the most recent Planet of the Apes trilogy. Or maybe you even know him from something way back like Felicity. Matt was given the script that Ben had already up to that point and liked it, or at least he claimed to like it. But he told WB that he was only going to direct projects that he had creative control over. After finishing up War for the Planet of the Apes, Reeves and writer Peter Craig went to work on the script for their upcoming Batman project. Mattson Tomlin also assisted them with writing, but he doesn't get official credit. Tomlin would move on with some of his ideas from the writing to make Batman the imposter. Tomlin is also working with them on the sequel for the movie. Some influences on the story were Batman Long Halloween, which fun fact, Jeff Loeb was one of Matt Reeves' screenwriting professors in college, so there's a cool connection for you. Of course, Year One was included as an inspiration, and Batman Ego and Other Tales was also among the inspirations. All of these books conveniently available in a box set for your purchase waiting online or at your local bookstore. It was never stated officially by Reeves in any interview that I was able to see, but it is very clear that Batman Earth One is an inspiration for this film, and we can tie that back. Jeff Johns is the writer of that series of books. And the rest is now comic book movie history. Why did I just give all that background information? I don't really know. It's not related to the topic of the video, so let's just move on. Production designer James Chinlin and Reeves worked very closely together to determine what they wanted the look of Gotham City to be. James Chinlin is a production designer who has worked with Reeves before. He worked on the two Planet of the Apes movies that Reeves directed. He also worked on The Avengers, he worked on Requiem for a Dream, which I highly recommend if you haven't seen, and he worked on stuff as recent as the live-action remake of The Lion King. Filming locations for the movie included places like Glasgow, Liverpool, London, and everyone's favorite stand-in for Gotham City, that being... Chicago! Chicago! Some examples for each location are like the Graveyard, that's in Glasgow, St. George's Hall is City Hall, Gotham City Hall. London's print workspace was used for part of Penguin's Club. They even used the O2 Arena for some scenes. Chicago was used for some street scenes and also for the wingsuit scene. Reeves said he wanted to give the set a sense of realness but also wanted to make it feel extraordinary. And Chinlin said he wanted Gotham to look and feel somewhat like Nolan's, like it was a place you could actually visit but he also wanted to add feelings and emotions that you would get off something like the Burton movies. He compared it to cities like Chicago, of course, or Pittsburgh since they were very industrial cities with a heyday. They wanted their city to look like it had an economic boom time pre-war, where architecture was just flying up and architecture styles were running fast and loose with how buildings looked. The main image they were going for was early to mid 20s through the 1940s, Hearst Castle, for example, was an inspiration for Wayne Tower, and that was built exactly in that time period. Chinlin said that London provided the decayed gothic layer with the lower Manhattan area working as the anchor for their unfinished skyscraper that they described Gotham City as. 
It allowed us to litter the skyline with these unfinished skyscrapers. When you see the sky, you really see all the grit up there in the skyline. I'll get back to the skyline later on in this video. For the first time really since Batman Begins, a lot of Gotham is a set. Akin to the 90s films from Burton and Schumacher, multiple city blocks were built on the Warner Brothers studio lot. They also built the interior of Gotham City Hall from the ground up. Personally, I am all for this. I much prefer this over shooting on location in an actual city for your entire movie. Say what you want about the Burton movies or the Schumacher movies or even Batman Begins. I think constructing Gotham City from the ground up as your own creative vision allows you to use Gotham more as a character than a lot of the more modern interpretations of Batman have had. You can just build that ideal look and I think similar to what I thought about the Narrows in Batman Begins, that the Gotham City depicted in this is very right up my alley, not to use any crime alley jokes. But anyway, back to the Batman. A lot of the constructed city that they made was inspired by the work of Robert Moses. Robert Moses, if you aren't familiar, was a very influential city planner for New York City during the time period that they were aiming to replicate as well. Moses is responsible for designing such areas as Brooklyn Heights, the Henry Hudson Bridge, and Castle Clinton, among many other locations in the area. They decided to design their Batcave after the train station underneath Waldorf Astoria in New York City. This station was underground the hotel and used to transport the wealthy in the early 1900s. They also compared it to the secret car- well, not really a secret since people know about it, but they compared it to the underground tunnels that politicians use in DC as well. Of course, the layout of the Batcave also gives Bruce pretty good access to multiple parts of the city. Shinlin himself has expressed the joy he had while making up the layout of Gotham City since he grew up in New York City and partook in the area's club scene at the time. So needless to say, with how much influence this city has taken from New York City, a lot of this was very close to him, especially stuff like Penguin's Club. Moving back to the skylines like I mentioned earlier, the skylines in this movie were able to be manipulated and created from the ground up because they weren't actually real skylines. The film was able to take advantage of LED green screens, aka the volume, made famous by the majority of Disney's live action Star Wars TV shows. If you aren't aware for whatever reason, the volume is essentially that of a green or a blue screen that you would use in most movie sets. The only difference is the walls and the roof of the volume are entirely made of LED screens. This allows the actors to actually see the areas they are supposed to be set in for the scene, and it also creates natural lighting which assists, obviously, in setting the mood and the look for the scene. It's mind-blowing. You'll be on a set, and if you just want to change the background, or you want to get a turn around on an actor, you're not physically moving the cameras, you're actually just moving the background, and all the lights change. With the iPad, we can bring it up, we can soften it, we can make it stronger, we can move it over there in like seconds. The other great thing is that that's all saved. If we want to come back to it, we can bring it up again in seconds exactly the way it was. You've also got the, the rest of the environment there, so the actors can experience the space as they're driving the cars. They can react to what they're, what's coming at them on the screens. The film used the volume mostly for rooftop scenes or with shots with the skyline in the background, Falcone's suite being a big example of this. The skyline in question was created using the Unreal Engine. This allowed them to make the entire city from the ground up and have it look however they pleased, essentially. They also used the volume to recreate vehicle chase scenes, most notably the one between Batman and the Penguin. Even though it's not my favorite Batman film, I can't deny that the depiction of Gotham City is ideal, in my opinion, as far as look and feel goes. They set out to make something that looked real but also felt fantastical, and I feel that they hit the nail on the head with this one. I hope they continue the work that they did here and, of course, build on what they've done here. When asked about working on the upcoming sequel, if he has any designs laid out yet, Shinlin told the rap, I'm always dreaming, always dreaming. I'm really excited. I hope it happens. And needless to say, I too would like that to happen. So thank you for watching or listening. I hope whatever anticipation has been built up from the last two architecture city-based Batman things I've uploaded has been paid off. I have 
no real idea what I'm going to do next, honestly. If you're interested in the Guardians of the Galaxy at all, I plan to do something at least about the Dan Abnett run, so hopefully I can get that out to you guys if you're interested in that. Um, if you like more Batman stuff, let me know. If you want more Star Wars stuff, let me know. Whatever thing you think would be interesting, hopefully I can appease that request to some extent. I'll, I'll play, you know, whatever you want me to play. Or I won't play at all if you don't want me to play. No, whatever it is that would please you, I'll do it. But regardless, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. I'll leave a comment, all that good algorithm stuff. And I will catch you guys in the next video.